All right, I figured after all of this redundant, same old type content that I constantly feature on my channel, I'm gonna finally start talking about window managers. And this is something that I've, I've been meaning to talk about and I've been meaning to look into, um, but I've been kind of just lazy to learn. I've been so used to desktop environments. Um, so because this is my first time uh, dealing with a tiling window manager, I'm going to, this video is going to be from the perspective of a beginner um, and seeing just the basics. I'm, I'm not going to be talking about the configs and how to make your setup look like the ones that you see online. Uh, I'm not going to talk about efficiency and all that type of stuff. This is really from a beginner's perspective, seeing this for the first time, using this for the first time. Well, this isn't necessarily the first time I've used this, but this is one of the first times. Um, the only experience with the window manager that I remember that I also featured on this channel having is uh, Openbox, uh, which is a floating window manager. And so now if you're new to i3 like I am, I'm going to give you some really quick background information. So i3 is a tiling window manager, which means when you open up a window like the terminal, for example, if you open up another instance of the terminal, the window, the second window that gets opened, uh, gets opened, uh, kind of, it splits the screen in half. Uh, and if I open more, it's just going to keep doing that. Um, and basically what this is, is the windows tile and they don't overlay each other. They don't overlap. Uh, and this is, wow, that, that's a weird glitch. I don't, I don't know if the recording is going to pick that up, but, um, Oh yeah, by the way, I'm on a virtual machine, so expect more sluggish performance and perhaps visual glitches. Um, but yeah, so this is a very keyboard driven uh, type of environment and it's also very efficient. Uh, if you can take a look at right here for some <laughs> strange reason, uh, it's using close to 900 megabytes of RAM. That's actually super surprising. Um, I don't understand why it's saying that this right here, down here, it says, oops, my dock is appearing, uh, 350 megabytes. If that's, but that's out of two gigabytes. I don't know what this is representing, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm not quite certain, but anyway, <laughs> window managers tend to be very efficient on resources. Um, and yeah, so right now I'm using uh, Manjaro i3. And if you look at the bottom, it gives you the basic uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, and whatnot to kind of give you an idea. And this is um, this is what I would recommend for beginners. If you want to learn i3, if you want to play around with it um, and test it out before trying it out on actual hardware, uh, then this is really good to test out. Of course, you can also look online and actually do more research and through experience, you're going to get used to it and whatnot. So um, let's kind of play around with it and uh, see how it, what it would be like to just navigate through things. So if I want to open up the terminal, I just press mod enter. And so mod, if you don't know what mod or super is, that, that would be the, if you're using a standard uh, keyboard, it would be the Windows uh, logo button. So as I've demonstrated, if you open up a second window, it um, splits in half and it just keeps doing that. Uh, in order to close a window, you would press mod shift Q. If you keep doing that, all instances just get vanished. So if you want to use the terminal, it's very easy. Okay, so there's two type of menus. There's a D menu, which is mod D. And you could just enter commands here. So I don't really know what specific command. Let's see if F uh, is here. I don't know how you pronounce this, F E H. But apparently, um, I still don't know how to change the wallpaper. But apparently, you can manipulate images using this, and you would uh, have to. So let's do mod enter and type in sudo pacman dash capital S F E H. Again, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, mod shift Q to close that. So if we do mod D and we type F, as you can see, it appears here, but um, I don't really know how to use that. But I've seen it on videos before. 
Um, so you can run commands, and I've all, I think I also saw also mixer. There we go. So you can. I think this is basically running. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you if you know anything about D menu, uh, let me know because I think this is basically another way to run uh, terminal commands. If you do control or not control, yeah, mod control B, then you have this menu here, which is really nice uh, because it gives you all these various options. And so if you want to access the file manager, you just type up F and you have it appear here. So you could just navigate. And the way I'm navigating right now is uh, through the left and right uh, keys. So up and down, obviously, iterates through these options and then left and right moves you within a directory or out of it. So if you want to see this desktop file, here to the right, you get the contents of it. Uh, and if you press the right key again, you can actually go inside of it. And this is, I believe, Nano. Yep, right here. And you can actually start editing the contents however you'd like. And if you haven't used Nano, um, basically, you navigate using the keyboard uh, arrow keys, and if you want to make a change or whatever, you could just easily type that up. And if you want to make a change, you do Control S, and it says right here, wrote 17 lines at the bottom. Uh, and if you want to just exit out after, you just do Control X. Um, and of course, it also gives you the uh, options that you have here. So let's exit out of that. Another cool thing is, I believe, if you have a picture, it's going to, right here on this right side, uh, show you the contents of that. And I accidentally pressed O, and it gives you some more stuff here, which is interesting. So let's exit out of that and uh, go back to the menu, Control uh, or Mod Control B. One thing that doesn't work for some reason is if I press B for browser, it doesn't work. Uh, it's probably because I haven't assigned uh, web browser as the default one although if you've oops if you've noticed let's go to back to d menu you can run um opera or not opera my bad uh, pale moon so pale moon is the browser that uh, this manjaro version ships with by default i'm not quite sure i personally am not a fan of it because it's uh it it seems very outdated so that's why i just uh instead of that i decided to install firefox for this video so let that open up and as you can see uh an instance of firefox opens up it takes up the entire screen and if we do mod d again and if we want to run it again it's going to split it in half so Going back to the file manager and images, let's just do blue wallpaper, I guess. I don't know, just something simple, something very simple. Um, so let that load up. And let's right-click on this and save it in the downloads. So this is interesting because I'm using a very small resolution. It's uh, 1366 by 768. So as you can see, the window, this is a window that isn't really obeying the tiling rules. So it just popped up uh, and it overlapped over the Firefox window. So I can't really see the entire thing. So one thing in this situation you can do is if you hold the mod key and you, um, let's see, let's press on it. Oh, hold mod and shift, my bad. If you hold mod and shift and you use the arrow keys, you can navigate it and move it around. As you can see, the title here that you get edited or, or edit and the uh, save button are kind of, uh, you know, not really shown on screen because of the small resolution. Um, okay, so let's go back to mod control B and let's press F for file manager. So let's go to pictures. Or downloads my bad so iterating through it with the right key we can see this is the image um, and if you oops I believe you can scroll in and out but it's not working for some reason I don't know why and if if you've accessed an image there we go you can scroll in and out if you've accessed an image but let's say you want to go back you just press the escape key and then you can move through the other 
uh, directories. So control shift Q to exit out of that. One thing um, that I feel like this isn't, I feel like desktop environments don't really make use of this feature as well as window managers, more specifically tiling window managers. But let's go to mod D for D menu and let's type up Firefox and load it up. So if you want to have Firefox on one window, but you don't necessarily want like a terminal, for example, to take up half the space, what you could do is, I believe if you press mod two, there we go. If you see at the bottom here, these are your workspaces and you can navigate through them with your mouse as well. Uh, and if we do mod enter to open up a terminal window, now we have the terminal on the second workspace. And if we do mod one, we can go to our primary workspace, which is where Firefox is. And with a very simple keyboard shortcut, you could just navigate back and forth. Um, if you do mod one or mod two, it doesn't matter. You could go back and forth. So this is um, very useful as well. And of course, there is um, a way to manually open up the browser if you do mod F2. Now, if you're on a laptop, you may have to do mod FN key and then F2 for this to work. But this is how you open up the default browser, which is weird. That's why when you go to the B menu, I don't know why this doesn't work. Maybe it just doesn't work for me, but pressing B doesn't open up the browser. Uh, for appearance, if you type a four, you could theme. Now, when it comes to theming, it has more so to do with config files and all that type of stuff. This is where things get a bit more complex and confusing. So I'm not going to go into that just yet. But if you do want the general windows, the way they look and whatnot, if you want to edit that, uh, you have your options here to set a theme, an icon theme, pointer theme. And if I press six, it gives you the options. And let's say I press one. So it says it was set successfully. So if we want to test that out, let's open up Firefox again. And uh, it didn't change. <laughs> oh, there we go. As you can see, the cursor is different now. Uh, and if it doesn't change right away, you may have to just quickly log out and log back in, which is another thing is if you press mod zero, it gives you the options here. So L is for lock, E is for exit, U is to switch user and so on and so forth. So if you just press, so I'm gonna use escape and do this again, just to show you how simple it is. I really personally like this. So just mod zero and then E with the press of three buttons, you can just really quickly log out. Now, if you're testing this on a live key or whatever, uh, the password for Manjaro is just Manjaro. So you can easily just log back in. It shows you that the connection is established again, which is nice. Um, again, if anyone knows about the whole RAM thing, let me know what this represents and if this is actually the RAM usage because that actually surprises me. Uh, I would expect something like 300 or less. Maybe it's because I'm just not knowledgeable enough, but so here you have, so these are really the main shortcuts right here, but there's obviously more shortcuts. So let's open up uh, two terminal windows. Are you also get notifications? Um, so when you hover over uh, one of these windows, as you can see, one of them gets highlighted. And let's say you want to move this right window that I've highlighted. highlighted. Let's say you want to move it uh, to the bottom. Uh, at that point, you do mod shift down arrow and you can move it either up. So if I press down, it goes back to, to the middle. And if I press down again, it goes to the bottom and it gets split like this. And if I press up twice, then it goes on the top. And if you, this is nice if you have multiple windows because you can navigate through them by uh, holding the mod key and then uh, navigating using the arrow keys left and right. And whichever one you want to adjust, you hold the arrow, uh, or my bad, you hold the mod key and then you press and hold shift as well. And then you press the arrow key and adjust it wherever you want. 
Um, so this is this is especially useful if you want to, um, you know, let's say let's say in this biggest window you have like text or your programming or whatever you, you need more space, and then maybe on this bottom one you run h top or whatever you know you just want to see your information and uh and this one let's say nano is it like that dot bash rc yeah there we go so as you can see this has its benefits and it's very useful uh and if you want to close let's say the very top left window you hold mod you um navigate through it with the arrow keys and once you reach it once it's highlighted you do mod shift q and then you close it and once it's closed, the window next to it expands to accommodate for that lost space. So this is very um, space oriented, I guess. Uh, it's very efficient when it comes to space. Um, and let's close up all these windows. And when it comes to uh, the taskbar, the panel, it's it's very minimal. This is the default one. You can obviously change it. Um, but if you want to still use like a package manager, whatever you have, Pam, PAMAC right here, and you can still easily install your programs. Um, I don't know what else is installed, to be honest. Um, but, oh, that actually just made me realize something because <laughs> I've been using dmenu to launch Firefox. So I suppose... Um, D menu doesn't work just for, or does it work for commands? I'm not sure, but D menu is like a menu, right? And you could easily uh, launch your applications. And uh, I just realized Nitrogen is installed, and there we go. Uh, I I've seen videos about this. Um, I've seen videos about Nitrogen and FEH or however you pronounce that. So this is an easy way to. Um, change your background, I suppose, but let's see, preferences. Okay, so the default directory is user or USR share backgrounds. So you could just easily add, let's go to downloads really quickly. Let's see, did that work? There we go. Select it, click apply. <laughs> wow, okay, so this is this is nice. So these are just some very simple basics here. Uh, and this is from, again, the perspective of someone who's had a very limited use of window managers and i3 specifically. Um, but I can definitely say that I'm quite impressed and I can't even imagine what it's going to be like starting to go into the configs and dot files and all that type of stuff. And, um, yeah so if this is your first time taking a look at i3 i think that you should definitely check it out and uh, perhaps try it out on virtual box or something um but i think that this is very refreshing uh coming from desktop environments you know so this is the first episode of me talking about window managers and i3 specifically definitely more to come um and I really have been getting into keyboard shortcuts, so I'm definitely going to also make a video about that as well. So that was basically it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you like the video, like and subscribe. And yeah, that was it. Thanks for watching.